Hello, and welcome to the Meditation Conversation. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin, and today I'm here with Michael Massey. Welcome back, Michael. It's been a long time since you've been here. It has, Kara. Good to do this again. Feels like forever in a forever in a day as they say no kidding yeah and it might have, has it been t- like two months or maybe might yeah maybe. it's been a long time it has and it certainly feels like you know eh, it feels like uh, maybe two decades so right yeah because there's been a lot going on a lot of shifts a lot of there's been a lot out in the world going on there has a um and so you and I were just catching up and we were kind of talking about, um, we were talking about metaphysical experiences and I was describing how I kind of had an epiphany a couple of days ago of, of what the meta, like when I start to experience more like a new dimension or um, where my consciousness like starts to expand into places that um you know, I'm not, not familiar with in my regular, you know, through my five senses, let's say, Mm -hmm. um, this is happening more and more frequently with more and more regularity. Um, and I think it is, that holds true for a lot of people, um, that things are getting, you know, and, and that's one of those, like things are getting amplified there, things are intensifying. That's one of the ways that, um, you know, people are experiencing that, um, but I kind of had an epiphany while I it was while I was talking to somebody about it because I was trying to explain what it's like and like visually because it when it happens for me, my eyes are closed and I'm actually trying to fall asleep, but I don't fall asleep um, and my consciousness just like starts experiencing things that I don't normally experience. Mm-hmm. And the way that I realized, it's like if I close my eyes at any given point, there is like this staticky, it's just like, it's, it's not black, right? It's like for, well, at least I can only speak for myself. What I see behind closed eyes is like this staticky, noisy color scheme of like, you know, it reminds me of when you, you know, the way that TVs used to work, you'd find a channel that didn't have anything airing and there'd be, Mm -hmm. there'd be audio static and there'd be visual static. And that's similar to what it's like when I close my eyes at a given regular moment, you know, Mm -hmm. and there are colors. It's not all black and white, like in the TV example. But when I experience those like, Mm -hmm. other realms let's say Mm -hmm. it's like that static gives way to depth and Mm -hmm. to clarity and I was talking to you and I'm like it is like when they talk when you hear people talk about seeing beyond the veil you know Mm -hmm. it's like it's like there's a filter because it's like it's like things come into focus so it's not necessarily like I'm seeing something like I've gained entry into a new place. It's like, oh, this is always here, but I can't see it because I see the static. And so it's almost like you can, like all of a sudden the static like dissolves or it gives way into this depth of another experience. And so then that triggered for you some things that, um, that, we were like, let's record this because this is really interesting stuff. So. Right. And, and the key word here being, uh, veils, right. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, I'm reminded of, of, I think that we, we did maybe record, I think it was, um, uh, I think it was about three weeks into right around 222 or something. I think it was actually towards late. Okay. February, we did record them based on some of the um, the energetics that have been happening, um, uh, you know, through the start of this 2022. And um, then that, um, what's transpired since then, and there's been the uh, a lot of the heightened anxieties and amplification and things like that. Um, and I was feeling that as well. And uh, going through some 
you know, personal trials and whatnot. And, and, uh, you know, while feeling certainly surrounded by a lot of this static and not being able to break through that, eventually there was at least I experienced a breakthrough. And in that moment, um, what happened, I felt my consciousness actually, uh, expand into, uh, and then this is one type of a veil mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about a few different types here, but this, this particular type of veil was, is an expansion in, in, of my consciousness into another dimension that I was previously unaware even existed. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if the, the dimension even existed at all before that moment, mm -hmm. but it, but it went in, it opened up to me and it was like, um, uh, it was a dimension that was, that was like a, a void space. And I could just, and it, I just felt or experienced and could see my own, the light of my own consciousness all of a sudden just like propagating through this whole new dimension, just like, and um, if there was a sound effect to it, it would be, right? Okay. And it was like, oh, you know, and, and it felt so good to break through whatever membrane barrier veil. Um, and anytime we experience an expansion of consciousness into an additional dimension, well, it, that is an expansion of consciousness, which is, uh, is always going to bring some, some benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the greater our consciousness expands, well, it, the more we have at our disposal, mm -hmm. uh, the greater understanding we have of things, so forth, so on. Uh, so that's one type of, uh, of a kind of a piercing of the veil. And so that happened um, for me recently. It was like, yay, you know, really mm -hmm. excited about that. It's been a little while. Now, that's just like one type of a veil. And, and what you're um, speaking of is, is, um, um, Seems like some somewhat related, but maybe not exactly the same. Um, now there's there's a few other veils that uh, I'd like to talk about. Three in particular, mm -hmm. and this happens to be with uh, 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 the first one would be uh, veils that block um, or a block. Um, it's a better word would be like obscure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause it's kind of like that. It's like a static noise layer that you just, you can't quite see through. Mm -hmm. And one of the veils is, um, obscures our memories. And so, and this happens to people more often than they, they might think is how veiled our consciousness is in the way that, our particularly our mind works um, with our conscious, subconscious, unconscious mind in the way that it's all structured and how much gets, gets, you know, put down into these deeper layer, layers that are then veiled. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not uncommon for uh, people to have a wonderful experience. Let's say even with somebody in a relationship, mm -hmm. And then, you know, a few, you know, a day, two days, three days goes by. It's like that thing didn't even happen. Yeah. And it's like, wait a second. Didn't we have a connect? Didn't something happen there? Yeah. Why is this, why is that experience somehow now seemingly veiled off mm -hmm. from memory? Okay. So that would be one particular type of veil. Mm -hmm. um, now. The next kind of the next is more of a kind of a, a progression of that would be a uh, is as a veil. Say, okay, I can remember, let's say, uh, an incident, mm -hmm. but can I feel it? Okay. Can I just remember that something happened? Oh, I remember I had this great spiritual experience but can i recall the way it made the, the way feel. it made it feel can i recall the specific frequency mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, and that's the kind of difference between those two is one is like, okay, you're, you know, in the first case scenario, it's like, okay, do I remember that I have this DVD in my library? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Which is then that's then the next level of that veil is, can I load that DVD up and play it? Yeah. It's a to, great point. To re-experience it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a, that's a whole nother, mm -hmm. nother level. And, um, you know, part of what, uh, you know, I know, we, you know, and we've spoken personally about, this kind of dynamic number of times now um, over the past few years and that some of the, you know, the, the shifts and everything that's going on. And part of this is there's a, there's a, there's breakdowns of, of uh, antiquated and old and outdated structures within our, our own consciousness as individuals and as a collective um, that uh, there are uh, um, that, uh, let's say hopefully um, are leading to and and are at least from a perspective that I'm seeing things is kind of systemically breaking down these veils particularly those two veils mm -hmm. uh, now at the same time we also have so much in the way of distractions and noise and stuff that comes from, from the, you know, from media and everything and the, you know, political and cultural affairs and stuff like this that can act as smoke screens, which is kind of almost a counterforce to the clarity we're seeing, seeking to be able to, to pierce through these veils in order to restore our memory access, our library mm -hmm. of experiences that we have uh, uh, to draw upon. Right. Right. So um, now uh, those, so those are, those are two primary veils. Now, something that you were kind of sharing about was, was sort of um, you were also talking about uh, on a f on a physical visual side, mm -hmm. okay, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, um, or at least you were earlier. So mm -hmm. there's the there's the eyes there's the eyes closed meditative experience of what's unfolding in your consciousness through a you know your own third eye spherical yeah consciousness view mm -hmm. right and then there's the also the eyes open perception of the world around you and you you said something to the effect of that if you, you kind of look with maybe the right kind of focus and you're looking around it's almost like you can see a static even with and, my eyes open. with your eyes open yes around you and it doesn't matter if you're looking at a Mm -hmm. blank wall or yeah. the backyard or mm -hmm. correct. Right. Okay. You want to, is there anything that you'd like to share about that? Yeah. I mean, just that, you know, if, if I look at these, these walls are what, like a light gray kind of color, but if I actually just look at it, it's all, it's like pixels, not as organized as a pixel would be because they tend to be more like, you know, squares I think of, but just, I can see lots of different tiny little colors. I mean, even if I look at your face, I can see almost like an overlay. If I, if I pay attention, like if I'm not, if I'm just distracted or, you know, caught up in whatever, mm -hmm. I won't even notice it, but, but it's like this screen almost, you know, that's like just these tiny little subtle colors that I don't normally notice, but that I can see with my eyes open too. Um, we've, now we've talked about, have we talked about sparticles before? Yes. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Okay. And I, I don't know if we've, have we done that maybe on the, I don't know if the, we've uh, talked about it on the podcast. podcast. And uh, yeah. Uh, so there's a, 
because because uh, you had, I think you had once a once upon a time, right? You were like, I, I see these little things in the air, in the sky. Are like oh, those okay. are typically in the sky, the sparticles. Okay. And I remember the first retreat I hosted, which was you know a couple of uh-huh. years ago now. And I would, I remember laying on the grass and having my eyes open and I was like, oh my God, there are all these like flash, just flashes of little, they're, they're there and they're gone. They're there and they're gone. But it was like, like it's way too many for me to even process. Yeah. I'm like, like fireflies yeah. blinking, but in full daylight and they weren't yellow, you know, it wasn't bugs. It was nothing physical but it was just like flash 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 and that happened a few times and then i'll just be walking around some not all the time but sometimes like if i'm walking outside i'll see like okay my sparticles sparticles right and um now it doesn't happen for me all the time either um uh and but it used to happen it happened a lot more frequently for me in sedona Okay. And there, and it's happened enough times for me to, and actually when I'm in, when I'm in Sedona or I can tell when my, when I'm in a certain, at least to a certain threshold in terms of my own energetics and how I'm, how I'm feeling and how I'm feeling connected, then I can just alter my focus gaze Mm -hmm. and I can see these. And, and I know I've seen them when there's, when it's in, bright sun in sunlight mm-hmm. or when it's completely clouded over it does it's not a it's not sunlight reflecting off of right. dust particles yes okay right and it and it they and they permeate through the air and they're almost like falling like rain all over there's i mean there's it's like trying to count the sand on the seashore i mean there's yeah. there's no way to calculate how many of those there are and um but it it does correspond to let's say a a certain level of awareness frequency etc and it always gives me a kind of uh let's say it's a warm and fuzzy kind of feeling that is associated with that particular frequency where the veils of physical perception are getting really thin and so there's like these little sparks of light that are starting to poke through this other this veil that is a physical perception veil yes a physical veil of perception and maybe a better way to say it yeah okay and so this is that kind of that third veil i want to really highlight here because this is the one that is in the 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 funny thing about the, the about the first one that I talked about. Uh, say okay, a dimension. I you know I had my consciousness uh, uh, expanded into a dimension of which I previously was completely unaware even existed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, when the, this is the astounding thing is that there actually is a perceptual veil that that in our physical reality that obscures our ability to see what is really there yeah and as such you know 99.9% of all people probably more than that have no have no even really rough concept that of what is actually right here in our physical environment. And it's just hiding behind a veil. Yeah. And it's literally here. Here. Yes. Yes. It's no, it's not a metaphor. Now right. the thing is we, we some, the, one of the ways that we can, uh, we can at least I mean, tap into it a little bit. Okay might be through um uh, it might be through uh fantasy okay Mm -hmm. um in particular media you know you you see uh uh, like from the marvel movies you see asgard this big Mm -hmm. you know golden 
city at its home of the gods or Olympus or something like that, where we have a, this kind of depiction and we might and recognize this like, oh, that's epic and that's beautiful. And that's about the only reference point reference point. Now, the idea or the notion that that kind of a world or reality is actually all around us. We just can't see it. That's the thing. And so we might we might resonate with some of these other what we think are other realms Mm -hmm. and aspire to leave this planet and go there Mm -hmm. and in truth it's just all it's just a veil away Mm -hmm. and when the the, there's something that that is so significant it can or about this particular physical veil uh, that obscures us from seeing the real truth of what we're what we're in, what we're what's all around us, and who we are, etc. Um, that understanding that it's it is completely when this veil drops. Um, and uh, there may be, you know, uh, it's such a hard thing to 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 even really talk about too much because it's there's a no way to prove it. You can't take a picture of it, and unless somebody has actually had that experience, they don't really have any contextual understanding for right what's there. So it's mm-hmm. like, hmm. um. But it's as self-evident as, uh, as, as like two other phenomena. I'm going to give two other examples that um, I absolutely love. And um, they're the examples of, and you can find plenty of YouTube videos about these two. One is when somebody gets a hearing implant and they're able to hear for the first time. Mm, yeah. And, you know, if I ever feel like I'm like dead or I might be a robot, I just go watch some of those videos and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm getting yeah. all choked up and cheering. I'm like, okay, my, I'm like, okay, my heart works. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a real boy. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's so beautiful to, uh, you know, to go from a world of silence and then all of a sudden the, that, that hearing comes in and now the, you know, somebody is is hearing the sound of their their spouse, their lover, their yeah. family for the first time, or hearing music and mm-hmm. and what a beautiful thing and how what an immediate shortcut that is and almost uh, you, you know almost a hundred percent of the time the uh, that said individual who just now has gain that sense that new sensory experience and it's just tears yeah and you know and what a privilege those therapists and stuff they get they get to sit there and yeah. just you know and there's nothing to sit you just yeah and the other one i really love that has um uh has very similar is the the glasses mm-hmm. that enable people who've never you know who are colorblind to see to see color yeah and it's so funny that you bring that up because my daughter just got glasses like yesterday literally just started wearing glasses for the first time yesterday we picked them up uh and she you know her sight was perfectly fine in november i mean Mm -hmm. she had like a tiny little a tiny little prescription that they were like, we don't put, we don't wear glasses for this, Mm -hmm. but if it gets worse, then come in. So, I mean, like two months go by and she's like, I can hardly see the board. And she Mm -hmm. sits in the back, you know, Mm -hmm. in most of her classes. And, and so we took her back in and she, sure enough, she needed glasses. She's still a small prescription, but, Mm -hmm. uh, but bigger than, you know, it Mm -hmm. had grown quite a bit since November. So we picked, she keeps asking, we got it. We got fitted for them two weeks ago. And she keeps asking, like, is it Mm -hmm. because I, it's, I really 
you know, I really can't see very well mm -hmm. in class. So she puts them on less than 24 hours ago, mm -hmm. you know, and she's like, whoa, it's so clear. She's like, mama, it's like brighter because <laughs> she, she, cause that's one of the things that like, you don't even think about. And I, I have mm -hmm. had LASIK, so I know what it's like. My vision was horrible before, but now I don't deal with that. So I, I mm -hmm. forgot about that part of it. I'm like, you're right. Yeah. It does, cr it gets clearer and brighter. Um, but she was having fun with it. Like as she's walking down the street, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's amazing. You know? Yeah. So it's so funny to bring that up now. Cause this is my daughter's world right now. Uh, yeah, I think I was about 15 or 16 when I first got glasses and I was starting to struggle to mm -hmm. read the board and, and, and I went and got tested and I think I had 20, 25 in one eye and 20, 30 in the other. So not, mm -hmm. I mean, just a little bit, mm -hmm. but it was enough that I remember when I put those glasses, when I put the glasses on and I was also, I was like, ah, oh, there's like leaves yeah. on the trees. Right. I mean, like, I was like, it's not just a green yes. tree. It's like, oh leaves yeah. yeah i could see oh i could see you know i'm just looking around yeah it's like fascinating it's fascinating mm -hmm. and also that um if you can't when you can't see that well is the is uh, it's like uh how much your stress that puts on your brain yeah because it's trying, trying to yeah. decode all this mm -hmm. this the sensory input it's getting and, um, and then all of a sudden you put those on and you're just like, your brain is like, whoa. Yeah. And it starts to, yeah, it just right. opens up. And, um, it's a fascinating thing. And, and, and the, the, and then for, you know, and again, for those who have been colorblind mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, then they get to see now that there's almost always this, it's. Uh, uh, the same response is all of a sudden there there's at first it's just wonder, right? Yeah. It's just, Oh, wonder looking around and like, Whoa, Oh, like, what? Oh, that's what purple is. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting is that, that is even if somebody has been colorblind, they're, they're able to label all the colors mm -hmm. that they've never seen. Yeah. Even though that they're, you know, because for them, I guess it's been multiple shades of gray or or whatever types of yeah. color blind they have, right? Well, they can usually see color, but just not all the, of the right. Because it's like right, not yeah. all of the spectrum. So everything's going to be there. Um, you know, if they're like red green stuff or whatever, so it's always going to be some kind of bluish graded things, yeah. or some of them. Can, it depends on on what what they're able to see versus not see, but certainly color blends. Mm -hmm. like your secondary colors of your purples, your oranges yeah. and stuff like that are going to look like other colors. They're going to look at yeah. sh like shades of another primary. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so they, they end up, um, uh, the brain starts interpreting that and identifying that that particular shade of such and such equals orange or equals yeah. purple. And now all of a sudden they get to see that. Mm -hmm. And the, the, what's so beautiful about the, this experience uh, is, is that it doesn't take but a moment of looking around. And all of a sudden, here's this person who is not taking for granted what is all around them. And they're looking and they're in awe and wonder at the beauty of. Of what we take Every, for granted. Of what we take for granted. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. look at my sweatpants. They're like, they're so bright. Yeah. Yeah. But it brings to mind too, we call it like Claire Audient, Claire Voyant, which is clear. You mm -hmm. know, it's like the ability. So every sense has its Claire mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, if you can perceive that sense beyond normal human ability, mm -hmm. then it becomes a clear. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, if you can, if I can look at you and see, you know, spirits, I see your grandma or, you know, right. whatever around you, then right. we would say I'm clairvoyant. Um, 
And likewise, if you can hear uh -huh. things, um, I was just talking to somebody today whose son is realizing that uh -huh. he can hear his recently deceased father. Right. Um, and so we say that's clear audience, but it is like, like, as we're talking about this, I'm like, it is this clear sight. It's like, it's, it's extra because we're so used to dealing with the veil, Yeah, you know, that veils for every single one of our senses. And so when we are, have that ability to clear uh -huh. the veil and be able to see more of this, you know, what's beyond these different veils and we have words for it. It's in our everyday vernacular. Yeah. And it's, it's funny you bring this up and I'm just going to jump in here with semantics and even offer up of a, an alternate definition because when you talk about clear audience and clear sentience and, and, and you, you gave examples of how those are actually those, those words are, or labels are applied. And, um, it, it, it's almost more accurate though. If, if you like you're seeing spirits or you're hearing that kind of stuff is, is an, it's an extrasensory perception, mm -hmm. uh, you might call it, um, or psychic or telepathic ability. Um, and I'm going to proffer up that, that those don't necessarily mean true clear audience or clear uh, voyance. Now, let's say beyond the sparticles, let's say this whole physical veil were to, were to dissolve. really dissolve, then we could see clearly where we are. And there's also a corresponding, which the, the great mystics from the East have spoken of through the Om. The, there's a sound mm -hmm. that goes along with it mm -hmm. and sometimes referred to as the music of the spheres. Mm -hmm. And so there is a visual and there's an audio component and there's actually an olfactory component to it as well and a taste component to it as well. And that are they are the 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 ability to to just witness um this world the tr truth or the true reality if we will that's behind this that's that's right here is so profound it's um it's it's and it's um what's what's the word it's um it's intrinsic. It's uh, self-evident, just as uh, somebody puts on those glasses, mm -hmm. okay, or they get that ear implant. Mm -hmm. Is um, is that you don't need to tell them? Yeah, right. Right. They can see and hear now for themselves, mm -hmm. and um, and it doesn't require any interpretation because it is a self-evident truth. And to me, this is the ultimate. And it's like the, it's the ultimate like prayer or, you know, a call out of the, you know, to all the forces of, of love in the entire universe to bring forth this experience that of this removal of this veil such that um, our, our eyes will really be opened and our ears opened to be able to, to see and experience this world that we are in that has been obscured from us. Yeah. And it won't require, it does not require anything in terms of any kind of interpretations Interpretation. or, yeah. or, validation this or yeah. anything and it's not uh it has no bearings on Belief. beliefs or, or yeah. any of it right and and it's and um you know when that day or that moment comes anyone who's who has experienced a breakthrough to be able to perceive this, that is always here, um, you know, knows what I'm talking about. Um, and if you're like those who have been gifted with this, have, you know, uh, it's not as if um, 
to my knowledge, anyone has sustained it or yeah. it's been glimpses, previews. Yeah. It's like seeing the trailer mm-hmm. for an upcoming film. Right, right. And so, yeah. um, uh, but with everyone that sees it, I guess it, it, it encroaches with every prayerful request, with every heartfelt intent and with every act of kindness that we can uh, do to help each other, uh, we bring it just a little bit closer and closer. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful topic. So expansive. I love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah.